Hey friend, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are on my homestead here in Wyoming and it is the summertime. We have the 4th of July coming up and I need to get some appetizers prepped and made so that we are ready to go. I don't know about you, but I like fresh and healthy things. I also like a few treats and I like recipes that are quick and simple and don't require a lot of prep work or cleanup, but can also be made ahead. I hate when it's like, we're trying to rush out the door and trying to throw together something really quickly. I would so much rather just make something that can be made ahead and then we can go and I just grab it out of the refrigerator. So today I'm going to be getting ready for the 4th of July. We are going to make three appetizers. Yeah, three that are all so simple, so easy, and are all things that I think if you bring them, people won't have seen them before. So I feel like a lot of times we think of like potato salad, chips and salsa. So I'm gonna give you a few new ideas that hopefully can give you a little bit of confidence in your summer appetizers and barbecues and parties that you have coming up. So let's go ahead and get this done. I'm gonna try to get this done in like 30 to 40 minutes. One of the things has to bake, and so that's where that 40 minute benchmark is sitting. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna make is a coffee cake. I like this if you're having like a morning get together or an all day thing, it's just really nice because I think everyone likes a little bit of a sweet treat, but I don't love like super heavy things and you can make these into muffins. So this is, oops, this is one that I really enjoy. And it's usually a very big hit too. I think a lot of people forget about it, to be honest. Everyone loves it, but forgets to make it. So we're gonna make a coffee cake. First thing I need is one and three cups, one and a third cup of white flour. Then I need one teaspoon of baking oops, powder. That could have been exciting. We need a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. And a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. You definitely wanna make sure you're salting your sweet things. Now let's just go ahead and give that a quick stir and our dry ingredients are done and combined. Now we're gonna move on and get our wet ingredients put together and we're gonna use the stand mixer for that just to make this whole process go a lot quicker. Okay, we'll set this off to the side. All right, I just set my oven to 350 degrees so that is preheating. And in the stand mixer, I'm gonna to cream together three fourths of a cup of white sugar. And then a half a cup of room temperature butter. I forgot to lay my butter out last night, so I just microwaved it. It's a little past room temperature, but it's all right. We're just doing the best with what we have. Again, we want this to be quick and easy, so let's get this cream together. All right. To it that's looking good I'm gonna add in two eggs these are just eggs from our chickens we're gonna add in half a cup of room temperature sour cream And that sour cream is what makes it very like creamy and yummy. Then I'm gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla. I got this vanilla from one of the sweetest moms here in Wyoming. She owns a bakery, it's called Brandy's Candies here in Grable. And apparently this vanilla is like, everyone fights over it. I did put it in, what did I make? I can't remember, I made something and it was phenomenal. So it says two teaspoons, but we're gonna do <laughs> a little more because we measure with our hearts around here. And then two tablespoons of milk. I don't have any milk at the moment, so we're gonna go without. Let's give that a good whisk. All right, I'm gonna give that, just give the edges a good scrape down. Our 
butter got a little hard, but it's okay. And now we're just going to incorporate our dry ingredients. Just half at a time, we don't want to get crazy. Or it'll make quite the mess. We'll scrape the sides down one more time. Our batter is good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our paddle out, give that a nice scrape down. This is looking so like smooth and creamy. Exactly what we want. Set this off to the side. All right, now we're just gonna make our crumb, that like yummy, sugary, buttery crumb topping that goes on top. So here I just have a stick of cold butter and we only need six tablespoons, so I'm gonna cut off that. And then we're just going to cut this butter into cubes. And then we'll throw it into this little container. Try not to touch it too much because your hands are warm and will melt it. All right. There's our oh so healthy butter. And to it, we're gonna add two and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Looks good to me. <laughs> we need two thirds cup of brown sugar. This isn't, you know, impacting the actual baking, so I'm gonna be close, but not exact. And I'm just going to use a fork to kind of combine it all. Okay, we're gonna bring back the bowl that we had our flour in. I actually do have a pastry cutter, so I guess I should probably just use the right tool for the job. <laughs> uh, one more again. All right, and then we need to add in three-fourths cups of all-purpose flour. And we're gonna mix that in as well. All right, you can see we have chunks of butter there. That's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and get this assembled. So to assemble this, I'm just spraying this pan. You can definitely use a square pan as well, but I like to use this one. I just find like it makes some cute little slices. So I'm gonna lay down half of this batter And then we're just gonna kind of smooth it out. Then we're gonna take some of our mixture and add that in. And then we're gonna add the rest of the batter on top of that. So we're basically just making like a sandwich here with that topping. That looks great. Then we're gonna take some more of the topping and I feel like you always, these always make way too much topping, but we're gonna add some of that on top. That looks perfect. I'm gonna make like a fruit crumb or something out of this later. And let's get this into the oven. 350 degrees for like 30 or 40 minutes. And while this is baking, we're gonna get the rest of our things done. Look how pretty that is. You can see the layering. All right, I'm gonna put this in the fridge. I'm gonna reset the kitchen really quickly and we're gonna get going on our other appetizers. Kitchen has been reset, dishes are clean. So we're gonna get going on our next recipe, which is going to be a, look how pretty that watermelon is. Feta watermelon mint balsamic maybe skewers. So first thing I need to do is just peel 
this watermelon and these rinds are a big hit my animals so let's get a little trash bin going all right we're just gonna throw the rinds in here because pigs and chickens absolutely love watermelon rinds And I know there's about a million different ways you can cut a watermelon, but this is the way that I find is the easiest and works best for me. So all I do is just go around the watermelon and cut off the rind, and then I just cut off any white pieces. Those are the parts that don't taste like anything. So I cut those off. like that and then we're going to be making cubes so i want them to be decently sized so normally i would not go through the tedious work of making my watermelon look beautiful but that's kind of what we want for this so i'm just doing a bunch of squares any piece that's like a triangle or that's not like the prettiest I'm gonna just save and we're gonna just enjoy those. Not as part of the recipe. And honestly, watermelon is like, oh, I'm so excited. We have about mm, eight watermelon plants out in the garden. So I am so hopeful that we can get some of our own garden watermelon this year. That would just be absolutely amazing. But we'll see. Watermelon in Wyoming don't normally go totally hand in hand, so. We'll see, but oh, I would love that. Okay, so then I'm just gonna get a bowl for these pieces and we're gonna put our not so pretty pieces. I guess I'm still gonna cut them up so that we have a nice little snack, but our not so pretty pieces are gonna go over here. And then I'm gonna finish cutting this watermelon into squares. All right, our watermelon has been cut. Now we're gonna go cut up the feta. So I'm just using a block chunk feta. And for this, I like my feta to be smaller than my watermelon just because feta is strong. So I'm just going to cut this into squares. And I'm gonna stick those in this bowl here. So our prep work is done. That's literally it. I did go out to my garden and just pull some mint. But for these little skewers, you're gonna take a watermelon, a feta, and a mint leaf. We're gonna skewer them up together, just like that. You can also use a basil leaf if you would prefer, but I find the like, freshness of the mint is super yummy. And this is something you don't wanna assemble beforehand, so you want to only kind of assemble it like an hour before you're gonna go. So you can keep everything separate and ready like this. And then either when you get there or right before you leave, you can go ahead and assemble. And what I love about this recipe is it looks very like fancy and gourmet. So I just put it on a cutting board, but it looks super fancy. All right, we're gonna make three more. There you go. And then I will drizzle these with balsamic right beforehand. All right, our final recipe, so, so simple. If you don't enjoy cooking or feel confident cooking, this is one of like the best starter recipes ever. All you have to do is cut one thing and it's gonna be delicious. So here I'm cutting up a half of a small onion. And you wanna cut this very, very small pieces so that you don't get like a huge bite of onion because we are leaving this onion raw. So I have this very finely chopped. We're gonna throw 
our finely chopped onion in here. You want about a fourth of a cup. So we'll call that a fourth of a cup. We don't need to be crazy exact with our measurements. Next, we're going to add in one can of Southwest corn. So it's just corn with red peppers and poblanos. If you're using garden fresh, like if it's that time of year and you can use garden peppers, just do your corn, obviously boil it or roast it and then put in some poblanos and red peppers. That will absolutely work from the garden. Then we're gonna do a half a cup of mayonnaise, then a half a cup of sour cream. Again, we're just eyeballing today. We can always add more. And then three fourths of a cup or so of cheese. I'm using Colby. Cheddar's probably gonna be the best, but I only have this and we're just using what we have on hand. And we're just going to mix that all together. Perfect, so it should look like that. And then you can eat this on tortilla chips, potato chips, crackers. I really like it on tortilla chips. So I'm gonna grab a chip real quick. Okay, I lied, I grabbed a cracker instead. It was closer. So I'm just gonna load up a cracker, give that a taste test. So good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more cheese because it'll help kind of thicken it up a little bit. Oh, it's so good. This is really good for like a Super Bowl party too. Honestly, it's really good for anything. Okay, we're gonna mix that in and we're gonna call it good. Now that that is done, all two of our remaining appetizers are complete. Let's go check on our coffee cake. It's still just a little jiggly, so. I'm gonna put it back in for another, mm, let's do, Eight minutes. All right, you guys, here's a final look at everything. I drizzled some balsamic over the skewers. And one thing that's great about these is you can get your ratios however you want them. So if you don't love a ton of feta, you can cut that down. If you want a lot of watermelon, make that bigger, whatever you want. Here is our corn dip. So, so yummy. And there's our coffee cake. Everything turned out so beautiful and I'm so happy to have these ready to go. All right, you guys, in less than 45 minutes, we have everything made. We have the kitchen clean, dishes just need to be put away. We are totally done. So how nice is that? We were able to get all of these things assembled. The only thing that I wouldn't assemble beforehand is your watermelon feta skewers, just because the feta will kind of melt a little or like leak a little. So make sure that you don't assemble those until you're ready to go, but everything else can be made ahead and is absolutely delicious. So I hope you found this video helpful. Definitely let me know down below what some of your other favorite quick, easy make ahead appetizers are. I think we can always be so helpful in bringing new ideas to one another. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already, and I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you so much for being here. Bye friend. Mm -hmm.